let's start. To be honest, we should start a few minutes earlier, but I thought the the uh, main talk was a bit late. Anyway, I will start immediately. We are going to talk about carbon aware Azure functions and mostly of how to uh, create uh, green software. Uh, before we start, give me a second to introduce myself. I'm George. Uh, I'm a Microsoft MVP and organizer of the Munich.net meetup. I live in Munich. Um, I work for Slalom as Cloud DevOps and Security. This is a, an umbrella of stuff, so uh, I'm quite busy, let's say. You can find me in all these uh, social media. And um, yeah, I think I'm going to jump this because this is also a presentation that I'm doing in Germany. And I'm usually saying a few things about Slalom too. But Slalom right now is all around the world besides Greece. It started in Germany um, a year ago where I jumped in, uh, but not yet in Greece, maybe in the future. So, um, Azure background and sustainable uh, software, anyone knows what it is or no Azure background? Okay, we're going to see Azure anyway. <laughs> but we're going to see how um, uh, we can create a sustainable Azure function. This, when we are there and you actually see the code, it's very easy to do it for any kind of code you're writing, uh, as long as it is C sharp. Or you can grab the Carbon Aware SDK and write your own methods. We're going to see that in a moment. So, what we're going to see today, um, we're going to talk about what is sustainable software. We need to have a, a, quite an idea, a strong idea of what is sustainable software and how can we can create one. We're going to see which apps Microsoft offers anyway to track your emissions, both for Azure and Office 365. We're not going to see a lot there, since anyway you don't have an Azure background. Um, we're not going to see the demo, that is. Uh, we're then going to see what is the Carbon Aware SDK that can help us do our uh, job, our software a bit greener. Um, we're going to visit the VATime, which is a service that offers all the information needed to do the, uh, our software greener. There is one more, which I will remember in the process, I don't remember right now. And then we're going to see Greenhopper, which is a, just a tiny library I created with the Carbon Aware SDK that you can use your solutions to actually, not only uh, uh, Azure, but in other solutions to make them, to help you make them greener. So, before that, let's see, no, let's go one step back. I don't know if you had time to read it. <laughs> um, whoever, I mean, you, you, as far as I understood, you said that you don't have a strong idea about what green software is, but do you have any idea how we can uh, make our uh, software greener? What would that mean? There are eight principles, actually, that you can find them in, in uh, greenprinciples.io. Uh, but before we do that, let's just see what, 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 how, what, what's the idea that you have about that. Yeah. Um, anyone? So, for example, sorry? Yeah? Yeah, exactly. That's one, consumes less energy, so it's energy efficient. Uh, that's... Okay. Thank you. Um, that's one thing for sure, and it's very important. Uh, there is a clear distinction that some of the actions that can lead to greener software also, also lead to cheaper software, and this is one. This is not always the case. But this is definitely one. So one way to brand this towards people that don't really care about green software is to greener software, uh, let's not label it, is to uh, focus on the principles that also make it cheaper. That's uh, quite convenient and everyone buys cheaper, right? So yeah. Um, 
energy efficiency is one very important thing. Carbon intensity, um, what could that mean? That means that use software or, or, or um, while using the software, consume energy that comes from resources that they are more green. How we can do that? We'll see later on. This is where Carbon Aware SDK comes in and the green hopper. Uh, embodied carbon. This is another principle. And since uh, we can also move, I don't know why it's not moving. Maybe this. Nothing works today. Now, yeah. So, um, as I was saying, embodied carbon. What does that mean? While we are using our devices, these devices have carbon. It. They are using carbon to be created. The more we keep those devices alive, the less carbon we need to create new ones, right? So how we use our hardware is also uh, very important. Energy proportionality. That means that don't go and buy a, a, a huge graphic card if you're not going to use that much. Because... Uh, um, um, a, I don't know, a very efficient PC where we are using only the 1% and that 1% causes the same uh, um, um, uh, wear and tear in the, in the software, in the hardware, it's, it means that you will need another high-speed CPU in the future and more carbon to create it. Networking means try and create less uh, 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 communication between your networks. So all these things, besides the carbon uh, awareness, are actually uh, topics that you can sell as something cheaper. Less communication, less networking is cheaper, of course. Uh, less hardware, if you don't need it, is cheaper. Um, uh, consuming less electricity, so having um, 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 less intensive CPU load uh, workloads is cheaper. All of these things are cheaper. Demand shaping, also very important, but I mean, it's not always that easy to shape it, it to uh, um, um, sell it, let's say. It means that try to shape the demand upon your software towards the times that it's, uh, the time of the day that it's, Nothing, right? Towards the times of the day that uh, the electricity is greener. And by that, let's see an example. Uh, you have an eShop and you're trying to sell a product. That product is not available that very moment, but you have storages all around Greece and you wanna search on those storages. Instead of saying, yeah, just wait, I'm searching right now, send an email to your customer and saying, we couldn't find it, but we can search all of our storages and give you a response later on on uh, where you can find our product. That would mean that a carbon aware Azure function will trigger at a later time when, it's, when the, the uh, electricity will be greener, will search all the storages and create a response to that client. So try to, 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 to shape the demand around those times of the day. And this is mostly, this is the most difficult, I would say. Another example would be reporting, right? You've been asked, get me a report every morning about this and this and that of my, uh, uh, of my warehouse. You can run that report, not in a fixed hour, two o'clock in the night every night, but maybe in an hour that it's more greener. Nobody will care about that when it's actually running. The last one, measurement and optimization. Yeah, of course, this applies every time, right? You need to monitor your software and actually uh, correct it when something is wrong. Uh, I, I, I consider it quite important to actually try to understand these eight principles. So anyone can think an example of each one of those, besides the eight, of course, each one of those uh, real life example of those principles. Yeah, for example, the carbon efficiency. You could create a streaming service that uh, um, um, encodes the stream in order to reduce the load on the server. The 
energy efficiency, we talked about the e-commerce side, where you actually need to run the, your, your software at a later time of the day. Um, embodied, embodied carbon, yeah, of course, you understand what it is. Um, energy proportionality, I think we already talked about that, how you can choose your hardware to match your software requirements and not, the, not just buy something. Um, networking, that would work very well with CDN. You want to um, create a, a, a network that is efficient and by moving data closer to your uh, consumers makes it more efficient, right? So what time is it? It's 11.30 almost. Let's move forward a bit. Microsoft apps that track emissions impact. So these are free. If you have an organization, you can just go out there and install them. I think I have that window open already somewhere, maybe, yeah, here. So you can go to that page or you can Google emissions impact software dashboard and you can install for free in your Azure workloads or Microsoft, Microsoft 365, this dashboard that you get a lot of information on how your software and hardware behaves and if it can be improved. And don't forget, lots of those information don't only offer on how to make it greener, but also make it cheaper, right? And I say that again and again because most of the times it's not easy to uh, start a new trend inside your organization and saying everything, you know, let's rewrite everything because it will be greener. But people are more willing to hear when you're saying, Let's rewrite this part because it will be cheaper. Um, I'm not going to dive more into that. Uh, where is my, where is the exit? That, the other side? Yeah. I'm not going to dive more into that. Let's just close it actually and move forward. Uh, demo time, we're not going to see that. And now we're going to jump into the carbon aware SDK and see what is it. So, as it says, right, the Carbon Aware SDK helps you build the Carbon Aware software solution with the intelligence to use the greener energy sources. That means run them during the greener time or the greenest locations. You want to run something in uh, uh, EU East because you know that that time of the day, it's the electricity is greener here. Um, you want to run also, um, uh, you're going to capture with that tool telemetry of how your functions, your other functions or your workload runs and then consume that into some kind of dashboard like the ones that we've seen before. Make some assumptions or, or make some educated guesses on how the next run will go, then change your, your workload for that. The, why the Carbon Aware SDK? As you will see in a minute, there is a service called VATIME, which you can ping directly and get a, a response on the areas of the greener software uh, or greener electricity and also the time where the electricity is greener. But besides VATIME, I think it doesn't work very well in EU, we'll see that later. There are other services that do exactly the same. The Carbon Aware SDK comes to wrap all of them in one API. So instead of having to switch from, from service to service, you only have that, and that exposes everything in, 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 in one uh, easy-to-use model, in one easy-to-use API, and you can, um, don't care about the underlying service. So let's indeed pay it a visit. The Carbon Aware SDK, I think I have it open somewhere. Isn't it here? Yeah. So let's go here. This is what started here, I don't know. This is the Carbon Aware SDK. As you can see, if we move forward, how it's built right now is to place it somewhere and that will expose these endpoints that you can consume for your application. As I said before, the underlying service, if you will use VATIME or any other service, it's up to you then to create an account. Some of those services have free accounts. Some of those, especially for industrial use, have uh, uh, um, um, 
paid accounts, uh, but it also offers this CLI approach. So it's like a small library, you run it and you're getting responses based on their CLI that they are offering. Now, they are not offering for now NuGet packages and that was quite a uh, challenge to include all the, 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 the uh, files of the um, Carbon Aware SDK into one NuGet package to create Greenhopper. Nevertheless, at some point, this was the suggestion that I offered uh, to them after I finished Greenhopper. Let's do that because maybe it will also be, the Greenhopper will be obsolete after that. Maybe at some point you will have that. We'll see uh, in a more detail in a while how exactly we can use that and how you can use the Greenhopper. But for now, let's return here, which is the VAT time. Now, it's a non-profit organization that collects all this information. As I, I think I told you just a minute ago, uh, VAT time is not very good for EU. It doesn't have the, the, the detail uh, that other services offer. And let me remember that service right now. I think it was... Uh, here, I will find it in a minute. It is... Come on, data sources. Do you see what I'm doing? Hopefully. Electricity maps. Yeah, electricity maps is quite better on this. And we could also uh, visit, pay them a visit. So you can get a feeling of uh, what's happening. Let me actually duplicate my screen because that's not working apparently. And now we see the same. So, what time? Let's go to what time. This is the, the uh, index page, the first page, and gives you an idea very quickly if you have a zip code here, the energy efficiency, the emissions based on a scale from 1 to 100 for that specific region. Now, we also have, a, they also offer a way to actually um, uh, see, get the data, data plans, coverage map. Now, what it loads here is a, a, a map of the US, but if we zoom out a bit, we'll see that they offer also information about EU. The problem here is that they are, they, they are not very granular. So you see that in Germany as a whole offers one uh, uh, metric, one em em emission intensity. Greece, the same thing. So yeah, in a sense, you could use that to jump into another region, another Azure region, and actually run your software from France. Right now, not from Germany, because it's, the emissions are higher. But the thing is that Germany has two data centers for Azure. I think another two for AWS. Most probably, one of them would be better to run it. And in Germany, there is a big deal of, of uh, uh, data protection. They are very afraid of moving data out of their country. So, this is not very efficient. The electricity maps, on the other hand, electricity, oh, electricity maps, this one, uh, where is it? Oops, yeah, not that. They have Although you can see it here now, it seems for the Germany they also have one uh, one metric also. I didn't remember that to be honest, but it's it's uh, irrelevant. The point is that you're getting more information, more detailed information. There is a chance that every region in Germany has the same intensity more or less, because you can see in Italy you have different intensities. Yeah, uh, you can also see the way of electricity flowing right now. Why? Because since right now France is greener, countries all around are asking f uh, electricity from France. This thing is not big yet for smaller companies and mostly for, I, I think, for most companies of Greece. But bigger companies, especially in the US, they are obliged to have a carbon emissions uh, uh, um, report 
that they have to be uh, they have to reduce their carbon emissions every year. So big companies out there, BP, Microsoft, all of those companies do that thing, uh, in, uh, include these maps, these uh, approaches in their software. The um, uh, dashboard, the emissions dashboard from Microsoft that we saw earlier, if you include it in your organization, you will get that report exactly as the authorities want it uh, daily. So this is one more reason to actually do that. Now, if we move back, we've seen, let me go back to the, uh, we've seen what time and we've seen, by the way, um, uh, electricity uh, maps. Let's see how we actually use it, right? We'll see now in an Azure function, you could do the same, as I said, in any language that uses, that if you're using C Sharp. Um, and in order to do that, what do you see here? You see this one? Let's first go to visit our green hopper. Uh, no, go here. And this is fine. So this is green hopper. This is, as I said, it's a very small library that consumes the SDK, creates an account. If you scroll here, you will see that I've signed an NDA with them and I have somewhere here um, uh, the way. You're not sharing anything. But didn't I duplicate my screen? Well, it says here it's duplicated, but what could I redo it? Okay, that was strange. Sorry for that. How long am I not sharing anything? <laughs> Did you see the VAT time and uh, electricity maps? Yeah. You've seen that, okay. Then I don't know how this happened, but at least now I'm sharing my screen. This is the carbon aware SDK that we were seeing earlier, the electricity maps. Yeah, let's close that. So get them out of the way and have this window only. This is the green hopper, the small library that uses the carbon aware SDK. Now, if you go through the uh, documentation, we don't have enough time, so it's not uh, very important. You will see that I'm offering already here a username and a password. This is for that time, uh, this is uh, after signing a contract with them to support it since they are a non-profit um, uh, non organization, you can use them. At some point, if you see them that they are not useful in, anymore, you can just create a new set of username and password. It's free. You're only paying if you are an organization, if you want to get that seriously in your organization anyway. So how the, the Green Hopper works? Let's open, let's start Visual Studio really quick. It's a new Git package, as I said. So create a new project. An Azure function, let's do that. Uh, yeah, we're, we're not there. Let's go, let's go to desktop. HTTP trigger, let's do a timer trigger. Now, this is where it offers some benefits, right? If you do, if you do any other trigger than a timer trigger, an HTTP trigger in another function is responding to an HTTP request. You're requesting for a web page, another function wakes up, does what it needs to do and returns back the result. So it doesn't make any sense to put to have a carbon aware HTTP trigger. It makes sense though to have a timer trigger, as we said before, for building um, uh, reports, right? So let's do a timer trigger here. And once we do that, yeah, it's already there. First step, let's add the new Git package, which is called Green Hopper. Install it. It's version. It's version one. So because I just managed to pack all the the Carbon Aware uh, uh, reference in one new Git package just a few days a week ago or something. So we did that, and then the next step we need to do is actually register it. Right. Use. Oh, I need to add the using here. Using green hopper. And here, 
use or register how if I write green hopper, ah, configure green hopper. That's it. Now the first step is done. Now our Azure function is able to make calls now to the equivalent SDKs and get back a result. Let's come here now. And actually, let's let me just to spare some time. Let's go here in the sample where you can find everything. And let's go into the Carbon Aware Azure function. What we are doing here, let's copy all of that thing from here. We are using DI, dependency injection, to get our green hopper service here. This is called function one and not carbon aware as a function, to get our green hopper up and running. And then here, let's forget the activity, doesn't matter for now. And then here we are just asking green hopper is the optimal window now. Now in order to understand the ask, this uh, method here takes two arguments. One is the execution time frame in seconds, and the other is the ex estimated execution duration. So you want to run, run a payload that runs for five minutes in the next hour or in the next day. And this little function over here will tell you, you know, that five minutes run you want to do, it's better if you run at 10 o'clock in the night or 9.35. So you're asking, you're doing, I want to run uh, in the next, uh, in hours, in the next 24 hours, a workload that out of experience needs um, 10 minutes to run. When that thing runs, it will tell you, you know what, the optimal window is not now, or the optimal window is now. This is only the only thing that you need to do. Then you have your timer running every one minute, it's an overkill every five minutes. All the intervals of getting emissions back is every five minutes. You are not getting uh, 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 details on that. So we can run your function every five minutes. Your function will ask, is it optimal to run now? If it answer yes, it will run now. If not, it will stop. And this is it. That's the way to actually run greener software. Just by adding those two lines, three lines here and referencing green hopper over here. And again, most of the times by running greener software also means running cheaper software. You can, if you start playing around, you can see that you can have a, an Azure region here. I'm interested to know if it's for the US East one, or I don't know, the greener time for this region. This will give you the greener time for the region you're actually running right now. So yeah. It's done. Only with that, you will run this 10 minutes payload greener. Yeah. Of course, just to add something more, you need to have your, uh, in your app settings, your username and password, which is, you can use that or you can create, it's better if you can create your own, actually. But it's not something very special that I'm showing you here. Like every other username and password, you can see it in the readme file. We can have these things here. So uh, instead of passing those as a parameter here, you can just skip that. Where was my parameter? Ah, in here I'm skipping them. In here I'm passing them. I could just forget that, just have it like that, and pass these two uh, parameters as up settings, those two here. Um, yeah, that is it. Any questions on how, on anything? Yep. Uh, sorry, uh, is there a plan? Okay, this is for, you know, uh, taking advantage of uh, green emissions and uh, cheaper electricity. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, is there a plan to create software that uh, makes your code greener or gives you insights? So, this could be considered any kind of software that optimizes your code to run faster, right? Sure, if that not always. For example, maybe you do dynamic programming and you use a lot of memory just to be faster, but this is not greener. So you are going to take the performance hit and you have greener software. Yeah. Is there a plan for software such things? So uh, there is a plan to do many, th there is a, a, a wish to do many things around the field. 
but things need to start uh, keeping up with this trend. It's actually happening in the bigger companies because it's an obligation for them to produce carbon emissions reports. And then they have to do this kind of stuff in order to be greener. Uh, but it's not yet real for smaller companies because they know that, you know what, if I go into a smaller company and I enforce these things, I will probably add additional cost to their operations. And this is not something that uh, apparently anybody wants to do right now. I, I believe in the next five, six years, a lot of things will change around that. And this would be even more uh, important to have in your, in your um, uh, workloads. I think that at some point, Azure, AWS, all of them will, make, will move the cost of running something inefficient to you, as they're already doing. Now, if you run something that requires more CPU, you will pay more in Azure and in, in AWS and everywhere. Uh, you're not paying more if you run it though inefficiently or if you're not, not running run it green. At some point, this will start happening. For workloads that can run in a greener uh, period of time without any additional cost, if you choose not to, probably all these big companies will try to push the cost of that to you because they are paying more for that. They are paying, let's say, a fine when they're doing these things. I don't know when this will come, but probably in the next five, six years, um, yeah, it will be here. For now, since only, as I said, not just big, vast companies are into these things, the um, requirements are less important because for them, a specific team of engineers are equipped with all these tools and they are monitoring all the software in order to make it greener and they don't care about having a, a common knowledge for all to, for everyone to consume. Um, yeah, let's see. Anything else? Yep. Does this also mean that big companies who have the infrastructure will uh, plan to build the infrastructure in areas where the energy is greener? Yeah. They are already trying to. Uh, maybe you've heard, this is not news, but maybe you heard that the Microsoft is experimenting with um, data centers underwater so they can cool themselves off without, the, without consuming energy to cool them off. They are building data centers near, near nuclear power stations so they, they are consuming energy directly from there. So they are already doing that thing. For them, this thing is not only because it's greener, but it's massively cheaper, right? That's what, that's what I said, that it's easier to start selling it as something cheaper than selling it as something greener. At some point, it will be more expensive, as I said before, but for now, it's just cheaper to do those kind of things. Do you think we're going to have an energy efficiency rating for software that you have with refrigerators? Yeah, we could very well. So. If you install the emissions dashboard for Azure, you will have that. Um, so if you install it in your Microsoft infrastructure, in your Azure infrastructure, you will get an idea about how efficient your, um, your, your, uh, Resource groups are how efficient your, uh, your Azure functions are, how efficient your entire tenant is. So you will get a lot of information of how efficient your specific code is in, in, in being green or not. All this stuff, you can see if you, for example, take a look here. Ah, I thought that I will open the image, to be honest. Uh, let me do that. So if you see here, you will see for your subscriptions, what are the emissions you are producing. And if we had the, the dashboard running right now, we could, you could see that we could drill in and reach all the way to a specific um, piece of code that you're running in an, in, an, in an Azure function. So it's there, it's happening. And also that report, I think I can find it um, really quick. Maybe I can't, but where is it? Uh, estimated avoided emissions. That's 
more or less what you're asking. So the specific, you're getting a report that, you know, your lambda function, your Azure function, sorry, your lambda function, it's, it's, everyone has that, um, could massively be better. Right now, you are not paying for this improvement, but at some point in the future, you will probably be asked to pay because Microsoft is paying for your uh, piece of software that is not very optimized. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can see the report here. Record report and reduce your emissions water. Anyway, I can't remember it. Carbon aware. Let me Google it like that. Carbon aware. Um, no carbon emissions. Reporting standard. It has a weird name that includes, if I remember correctly, the CO2. Um, yeah. Anyway, I can't find it right now. But it's not very important because it is produced uh, automatically by these tools. Okay. I think time's up now. So thank you very much for your time.